Now, since the the Bush administration and the larger conservative movement, when you say that, when you say that what, what needs to be done uh, first and foremost is to get out mm. and not be a uh, destabilizing occupying power, mm-hmm. their immediate response is, well, you're going to sit back and let genocide happen. Uh, and they have, you know, folks you know, in the intelligence uh, agencies, perhaps under some arm twisting, I, don't, I'm not, I can't be sure about that, um, who are backing them up now. Mm-hmm. But it seems to me that when that notion is raised about getting out, it is never talked about what would happen in conjunction with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what would so that's well, not just getting out, but there'd be other diplomatic and economic things that would happen at the same time. What would you say needs to be done in concert with getting out? Well, if we're if our goal is to stop the various sectarian interests in Iraq from killing each other, we should not be arming the 1920 revolution brigades in, in, in Western Iraq. You we think? Should, you know, <laughs> we should not be. I mean, how is it that we're simultaneously arming Sunni tribes and Sunni insurgent groups, giving them money and weaponry, and supporting the Shiite-led government that they're clearly going to go to war with? Well, that's a, and that's the story of Anbar you're talking about right now. There's all this talk that Anbar is the great success of the new strategy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Senator Jim Webb, one of the new uh, Democrats out of uh, Virginia, had pointed out, you know, this is not uh, this is not some great success. This is simply enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes. If you're gonna if you're gonna supply me with arms, I'll happily take out the Al Qaeda guys for you. But I, in the meantime, I'm getting geared up for a broader internal civil war. Yeah, I mean if if you're worried about preventing genocide and tamping down violence in a, in a riven country like Iraq, you don't start by dumping AK-47s on the country. You don't start by, by, by arming the most militant of those groups for these short-term gains. You would only do that in a country that you don't care what happens to it in the long run. You would only do that in somebody else's country that you know you're going to leave. I mean, the, the way that they're approaching... Um, the the try, trying to achieve some sort of short term benefit so they can so they can justify staying in Iraq through the end of Bush's presidency and put this occupation onto whoever the next president is, is is doing stuff that is at at at, at direct cross purposes with what they're saying the the long term goal is in Iraq and why we can't leave and so. Yes, we have to worry about the threat to the continuing, the horrible threat to civilians in Iraq. But it's not like things are great for civilians in Iraq right now. The best hope for civilians in Iraq is that they have their own government and a real government that holds the country together. The best hope for us helping them toward that end is for us to get out. And if there is genocide in Iraq, and if things do get worse even for civilians than they are now, that's a legitimate international uh, mission in terms of the international community coming in to stop that. That is not some American American foreign army standing in their streets occupying them. That's something that the, that the international community uh, can and should deal with, and we should pay for if that happens, because we created the problem in the first place. But our occupying their streets only prevents them from ever, ever, ever getting on their own two feet. Let me shift gears a little bit. Uh, you recently uh, interviewed uh, one of the presidential candidates, Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Now, how many candidates have you interviewed directly now? Oh, that's a good question. I've interviewed Barack Obama. Um, Dennis Kucinich, Joe Biden, um, Mike Gravel. That was fun. Um, trying to think if I've interviewed any. I don't think I've ever spoken with Chris Dodd. Clinton or Edwards? Um, have I ever spoken? I have, I have interviewed with John Ed- I have interviewed John Edwards. Actually, the John Edwards interview was really good. Hillary Clinton I spoke to in the last election cycle, but not in this one, although I had a really funny interview with Terry McAuliffe in which he spent half the interview promising me that he would get me an interview with Hillary, and then it never <laughs> happened. <laughs> which I thought was just such a great microcosm for the McAuliffe wing of politics. Uh, so I think, I think that's it. But So I've interviewed most of them, actually. So we only got a few minutes left, but mm-hmm. I want to get this. Do you have a different perspective on the state of play in the race because you've had these direct interactions with most of the folks, or is it when you're talking to them, since there's so much on script, it's just like watching it on TV? You know, it's interesting. Biden felt very unscripted when I spoke with him, Um, and I and I actually ran that interview long. I intended to edit it down, and I decided to run it raw, and we ran it over two segments, and got a huge response to it because I felt like he was really honest. And you know, I said I think that your plan to divide Iraq will will be like the legacy of India and Pakistan, where you've got a you know a half million people dead and and three wars and two nuclear armed powers, and it'll be a disaster thirty years down the road. And he was like, you know, that's a real problem. (laughs) I was like. Okay, like if you could, he was like, you're right. That is the. I would like it to end up more like Bosnia, but it might end up more like India and Pakistan. You're right. And I Oops. Was like, you know. That's, oh well. Well, it's. I mean, at the same time, nobody's saying there's a great idea for Iraq, but he's saying, yeah, that is the risk with what I'm proposing. And I just felt like, oh, you're off script. 
<laughs> That's great. You know you're on Air America, so nobody's going to quote you. Um, so <laughs> that was, I mean, that was nice. Barack Obama was the most disappointing interview because um, he's uh, he comes with this charisma uh, anticipation <laughs> problem, which is that you expect him to blow you away, and you know he was a he was boring. Well, he generally blows you away on the stump, but is less scintillating in the one-on-one interview or in the debate format. It's not his strongest. You know, format. I, he doesn't even blow me away on the stump. I mean, he did in in 2004. His his convention speech was amazing, and some of the excerpts of speeches that they you know posted on his website in terms of his uh, video clips and stuff. Like I can see that they are moving to people. I have never. Uh, I, I am not. I am not personally moved by him. It doesn't mean I think he'd be a bad politician. I just am. I'm not. Um, I, I, I'm not impressed by him as a moving person. We only got about a minute left. Mm. But looking at the field, is there anything substantive you're waiting to hear these candidates uh, speak to? to? No. No. The Democrats at this point, it's it's they're so much less relevant than the Republicans. Uh, the Democrats right now are um, are working out their their important dis- uh, their important divisions, but uh, right now I'd kind of be happy with any of them, and the Republicans are so much more fun to watch because they're busy imploding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been great to have you on the initial broadcast of the Liberal Oasis Radio Show. Thanks so much for making the time. Bill Sher, congratulations on the show. I'm so happy you're on WHMP. I appreciate that. Take care. This has been the Liberal Oasis Radio Show with your host, Bill Share. We'll be back every Saturday at 10 a.m. Next week, we'll be talking to my cohort of the Campaign for America's Future, Rick Perlstein, on the anniversary, the two-year uh, solemn anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, talking about how we still have hundreds of thousands of displaced victims We still have a city struggling to rise again. That'll be next week on the Liberal Voices Radio Show, WHMP, News, Information, and the Arts.